Icelandic State Park near Cavalier, North Dakota is one of the unknown treasures of the state. The park offers boating, fishing, and swimming activities, as well as a museum that tells the story of Icelandic settlers who first came to Northeast North Dakota. Some people say it's the best kept secret in North Dakota or in this part of the region. Icelandic State Park really has three main segments, one being the ethnic diversity that uh, is told in the Interpretive Center here, and that goes back from the 1870s to the 1920s. This part of North Dakota was settled before the railroad, so it's very unique in the fact that if you look at a lot of settlements along railroad paths, you'll have large ethnic groups such as Bismarck with the German Russian. This being an Icelandic area, most people came by wagon, horse, walked, ox cart. And so with the Gunluxons and everything, Icelandic State Park was established. The Heritage Center kind of goes up back from a, a seed planted from G.B. Gunluxon, and he talked about the ethnic diversity, and the Northeastern North Dakota Heritage Association built the Pioneer Heritage Center to tell that settlement period from 1870 to 1920. The other side of that with the, the Gunluxons and GB Gunluxons, the big significance of the nature preserve. And so right now we're expanding to include that vision of his, not only telling the ethnic diversity and how the pioneers prospered, but we're also telling the natural world. So people can come here, use their five senses, what they can see at Icelandic State Park and in the region, as well as the natural history, what animals used to be here, what animals are here today, how are animals being reintroduced, and how are they surviving in populations as our population expands. Right beside the Pioneer Heritage Center is our Pioneer Village, and the Gunluxon House and Homestead is original to the site. All the other buildings have been brought in, the log cabin, the Cranley School, the Acra Hall and the Halson Church. And those are key buildings and each play a role in how that pioneer community was developed. The second part is the Gunluxon Nature Preserve and that's North Dakota's first nature preserve. The Gunluxon family knew of those very significant biological features and wanted to set that land aside. And there's very significant biological features there. And it's really not touched except for by trails and maintenance so that uh, teachers, professors, students and public can come and, and see the changing of the landscape. The third part of the park is basically the recreation, and that gets into Lake Renwick and our campground. We get around 100,000 visitors a year, and anywhere from seven to 12 countries and different nations come here for the beach, for the recreation, for family vacations, for family reunions, and also to uh, study the ethnic diversity. We average around 7,000 camper nights, so if you look at you know, May to September, we're talking roughly 100 campers a night, and sometimes that fluctuates up into the 7700s. The large part of what we have here at Icelandic State Park is responsible because of the Northeastern North Dakota Heritage Association. That association formed the Pioneer Heritage Center in 1986 and when it, that vision came about and in 1989 when it was uh, finished and completed. That was all by donations. That was all by the Northeastern North Dakota Heritage Association coming together, forming that, overseeing the project. The state's involvement was overseeing that and more of the park manager and assistant manager's role of just interacting with that association. And all of the buildings that have been brought in are all a part of that association, being key members, bringing that in. Each has a person that oversees those buildings and works with myself and the state parks to maintain those. And without that interaction, what you see here today at Icelandic State Park wouldn't be possible. This is your heritage. You can let it be forgotten or you can make it live on to inspire future generations. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Humanities Council a nonprofit, independent state partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities, the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.